So with this video clip, I'm going to go through uh, the some of the software supports available for the Chris Brooks textbook, Introductory Econometrics to Finance. Uh, there's a full suite of software here uh, that uh, are available with the uh, textbook. It is, um, if you're a student and you're looking to master empirical finance, uh, this textbook is at quite a decent resource. It's a comprehensive textbook. It breaks down complex econometric techniques into easy to understand concepts. And it shows you exactly the tools that are applied in industry, real world and academic uh, type finance. It's definitely introductory, but it is intuitive, comprehensive and technically very complete with a full suite of uh, supports. So I will leave the link here to this URL, but you, in the uh, Cambridge um, University Press material provided, you'll see that there are instructors resources and then student resources with the software guides for R, Python, uh, EVU Stata. And then the raw data, the Excel uh, data is also, um, if you double click the Excel source files also available. The full suite, if you download all, will come as a zip file 51 and B. I'm not going to download the full suite uh, for this video clip, but I am going to take a look at the um, the software guide. So if we come here to um, the Python guide, we can uh, download. Uh, it's also available. Uh, as an SSRN by uh, Ran Tao and Chris Brooks. And the link to the support materials can be found with this URL as well. So if we copy this here, Control C, and go into our browser and paste, you can see how we can track down these materials. So I'm Let's say um, I wanted to work through to set up um, the chapter three and use the Python code mail available. I could download that. Comes in as a, a zip file. We can take a look. It's here. Um, if I go to downloads, and um, I can extract. So we need to extract actually i've extracted already uh, but we can extract all and then extract so unzip the file then if i go to uh okay maybe we can open up and take a look at this file in notepad now as is if we copy this into uh, a Jupyter Notebook, it probably needs to be edited a little bit. So we'll just go to the process of how we can take the raw file, put into a uh, Google Colab. Right, we can go open, well, we can go a uh, new notebook or we could open Colab, I'll, I'll show both, and upload the file. So if I go into chapter three here. Okay, so I'll just paste it. Um, I'll just paste in um, what we can do is just go no, new notebook. And paste in uh, and if we execute that, that will create some errors. So we need to edit. And maybe we would like to do it in a way that um, takes each code cell independently and separates. So um, maybe a fast way to try this would be to deploy ChatGPT. And just put in to our just uh, please uh, convert the, the code 
into an IPYNB file and see if it will render uh, an IPYNB. Now, I'm using the free version of ChatGPT, but if you, if you have the um, if you're a subscriber, obviously it'll make available a little bit more um, processing power to complete that task. Uh, but ideally what we're trying to do here is to take this file and essentially set it up as a series of cells, just to automate process a little bit. If I run that, now again, another modification here is uh, we don't have access to Tau24 OneDrive. So we'll take that out. And also the add path, we don't require. Um, and we do need access to the SAND SMP uh, hedge Excel file, which uh, we don't have here. Okay, so if we go back to ChatGPT, okay, it's provided us with the IPYNB file. It's come in, okay, uh, we could try uh, going back to Colab, open Colab, and we could upload the converted code that was developed by ChatGPT. So it took, okay, so it understood what I wanted. It wanted me, we would have got our code initially looking like this, and it's understood that the lines, line, one, line two, line three, line four, line five are separate uh, code cells. It's performed the conversion. I downloaded, and then I up when I uploaded the IPYNB file, it separated out the cells. Okay. Now again, if I run this, it won't work because it doesn't. We don't have access uh, to that C drive, so it's going to come up as an error. Also. I need access to the uh, Excel file. Okay, so we can remove this line, first of all. We can modify the path and read directly in from the content folder in our Google Colab environment. Now, just to note, we don't have that sand hedge Excel file. So we go into su the supports provided by uh, Cambridge University Press. I go to the software resources. I look for the Excel files. And I'm looking for SNP hedge. And it's this one here. We can download. It's not a big file. Uh, it's come into my downloads. Great. I come over to the content folder. We can upload, look for uh, the um, SMB, that's an Excel file. Okay, let's open that up. Now we'll have to modify the name, right? So if we come here, the name, so if I run again, I'm gonna get an issue, it's not working. So the file name here has to correspond with what's here. So let's rename the file. Okay, so we'll do it this way. Just delete that out. So S and P hedge, okay, fine. Now let's read our data. It's come in and we have the spot and the futures prices that have loaded in. Then to run the first regression, we're using stats model. So we've imported in stats model. And we have a linear regression output and we can look at the T values. And then uh, this is for the level, so the spot and futures price. Uh, if I take data, we might get the full size. 
see. Okay, so it's data going from 1997. Looks as if it's the first of the month, all the way up to 2018. 247 rows, two columns of data. We perform a linear regression model. There is an intercept. We have T values, standard errors, T values, and P values. Look, look, it looks as if uh, statistically significant. The R squared is quite high because the two correlate at the margin, perhaps not cannot differentiate this from zero. We then perform uh, convert to log returns. And now our, our data, we've dropped uh, the NA data. And the following month, we have um, from 1997. So here you can see the start date is September. Here the start date is October 1997. So we've converted the levels to returns. And we run, again, we can do some data description. And we run the OLS estimation again with summary output. And we can see here that the coefficient on the return is 0 0.97, very close to 1. And the R squared is 98%. Okay. So <clears throat> you can take uh, one way or uh, a pathway that I found interesting here in terms of navigating through. Uh, the resources, the Chris Brook textbook, um, the, the the software guides are available in, for Python, eViews, or Stata. The Excel files are available. A full suite of video lectures are available also, which I, I think can be uh, very powerful for helping students through. If we view all, it brings us to YouTube. And all Chris's uh, video clips are there. And then to implement uh, the Python code uh, right throughout the textbook, you can go to each individual file. So if it's Python that mainly interests what you're trying to do, if it combines better, let's say with data visualization tools that you have some prior understanding, the full suite of files for mapping out each chapter are available. The code, when you download the code, it comes in a format that's uh, like a notepad and not rendered fully as an IPYNB file, a Jupyter Notebook file. So one way you can deal with that is when you unzip the file, paste it into ChatGBT, and then simple request, uh, please convert code into an IP YNB file. I'm using the free version here. And then the notebook was rendered. Then you can download the notebook, comes into your, let's go back. You can download the notebook, chat GPT. And comes into your downloads, we have, uh, it came in here, the converted uh, code, IPYNB, and then it was just a simple case of uploading. If I go to Google Colab again, Google Colab. Now you need a Gmail account or Google account uh, to um, make use of Google Colab. You can upload the file directly. And then just using a few small, introducing a few small tweaks, you can adjust uh, the um, inputting of your data, right? So obviously that one didn't work. You would delete and then you would just make a few small changes uh, to uh, the notebook. What's um, where ChatGPT can be a big help is it takes the entire text and recognizes each individual command and then 
allocate a, a tag cell in uh, the IPYNB uh, file, right? And that streamlines a little bit the implementation of the model. Then all the data required here for each chapter is mapped out here in the Excel files. Okay, so that, that's a fairly comprehensive resource. Now, if you're more interested in, in R, you can follow a very similar pathway, eViews data, uh, also very heavily, very strongly supported. So it, as, as an instructor, as a student, coming to try to pick up, learn econometrics and engage in empirical finance, uh, a very complete resource with a full suite of uh, lectures from Chris as well, um, guiding you through how to understand the material uh, and so on. Okay, so let's leave that there.